Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and today we're going to be talking all about eyeshadow palettes that came into my life in 2021. I thought that it would be fun to sit down and just rank all of the eyeshadow palettes that I got this year and then I pulled them all out <laughs> and realized that I had a lot more eyeshadow palettes than I thought I did. I actually had almost 40 eyeshadow palettes come into my life this past year, which is kind of bonkers. I never felt like I had that many coming in, but having them all stacked up here, I realized there was no way I was gonna be able to rank them because A, it's just really too many for one video, I think, but also because I had so many, I didn't give many of them the love and attention that they really deserved. So it was hard to say, well, how can I rank this? I probably used it once or twice and then moved on to the next thing, which uh, I don't really love. But I also decided that I wasn't going to talk about any eyeshadow palettes that came in to this house in the month of December because they have not, again, been tested or, you know, sort of um, really put through the ringer. So this is just going to be my top 10 eyeshadow palettes from January to November. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start this off and we'll talk about my number 10 palette and that is this one right here. This is from BH Cosmetics. This is the Lost in Los Angeles palette. And this actually took me by surprise because this is a pastel bright palette. And you guys may know that's not typically the type of palette that I gravitate towards. Usually I am a jewel toned lover, but there was just something about this palette. I used, I used this so much over the summer. I was so drawn to it and I was so inspired by it. And I really, really, really enjoyed this palette. And I'm excited that when the weather warms up, I'm going to be able to bring this back out again because it was just, it was a lot of fun to use. Coming in at number nine, this is a little bit newer to my collection. This is from ColourPop. This is their Sonic Bloom palette. I believe this was exclusive to Ulta, but this is, as I mentioned before, a jewel tone dream. This palette is so lovely. Like this row of shimmers is literally just everything. I adore this palette and I feel like you can do so much with it. Yes, it's got some really bright, vibrant colors to do a really fun, colorful look, but it also has just some really good everyday staple neutral shades so you can have some very sort of office appropriate types of shadows and this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous and this is good ColourPop formula. I felt for a long time like ColourPop had a great formula, especially for the price, but then there were some palettes that were coming out that were a bit more lackluster. This one is though, I feel like a good formula. Coming in at number eight is also a newer palette to my collection. This is the new Lorac formula. So this is the Lorac Pro Palette Fairy Tale Forest. And yeah, it's a neutral palette. Let's, let's call it exactly what it is. It's a neutral palette with a couple of pops of color, but this is stunning. So I have always loved the Lorac mattes. I think that they are fantastic. They blend so easily. They build so easily. They work nicely. They are, especially if you are newer to makeup or you just don't want to hassle with it, this formula is awesome. Where I have felt a little bit let down in the past by Lorac has been in their shimmers, but this new formula steps it up, my friends, steps it up. Like In the past, I have felt like the Lorac shimmers just weren't sparkly enough, weren't metallic enough, just weren't punchy enough for what I was in the mood for. These, they step up the game. They step up the game and I am so happy with it. I've used it a, a good handful of times. I was drawn to it more than I should be, especially since, you know, I'm also panning eyeshadows. But this, this is just outstanding. So very nice. It makes me honestly want to pick up more from their line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold back though because they're all neutral palettes as well. <laughs> the next palette is this from Nomad Cosmetics. This is the Haunted Europe palette. Oh, this is just so much fun. This little hologram on the front. I don't know if it's picking up well, but so much fun. Um, but again, this is just my kind of just grungy jewel tone gorgeousness. 
I've done a dedicated video with this palette. I'll try to remember to link it in the description below. It is outstanding. I absolutely adore this palette and it is so much fun to work with. You've got all those just grungy sort of tones, but then you've also got some really bright, fun pops in there. Absolutely stunning, absolutely gorgeous. Number six is from BH Cosmetics. This is my Let That Shit Go palette. This was such a good collection that came out. I think it was recently on sale for Black Friday. Um, but this is the green one of the bunch. It has these just stunning greens and browns in it and I could not love it any more than I do. Like these shimmers are so freaking nice. Like you guys have heard me go on and on about uh, BH Cosmetics at nauseum. Oh, but look at those, this green, oh, stop it. So flippin' pretty. Like, look at that. How could you not be obsessed with this formula? It is so good. You guys know that I have been standing uh, BH Cosmetics for a very long time now, but oh, so beautiful. I do have another ColourPop in here. <laughs> okay, okay. I wanted this palette for so long. I tried to buy this on the original launch in 2020 and it sold out like that. Like it was ridiculous. People were pissed. I was pissed. They re-released it this year and yes, I bought it. And no, I have no apologies for it. This is again, my kind of color story. This beautiful grungy jewel tone beautifulness. The only thing I don't like about it is that it does have a pressed glitter, which I'm sure I will be pulling out at some point. But yeah, I love these. You've got your greens, you've got your burgundies, you've got your purples, you've got browns. You just have everything that I am looking for in a palette. And I am so happy to finally have this guy. I just am. All right, we're getting down to the wire. Coming in at number four. I feel kind of bad talking about this one and honestly the next one because I don't know if you can get these anymore. These are both from Indie Brands. So this is my You Beauty palette from Glaminatrix. I was so lucky to get this in the first round of releases and it is outstanding. Like these duochromes in here are so freaking pretty. I absolutely love this palette. The shipping, oof. The shipping was insane coming from Australia. Um, but these are some of those like, oh my gosh, look at these. They are so amazing. Like I am so grateful that I was able to get this palette because it is like, look at that. It's so hard to pick up duochrome. I think I'm getting it a little bit. Oh, so freaking nice. If you are able to pick this up, I highly recommend it. Again, the shipping was like $20 and it took forever to get here. But you know, it's an indie brand. I love supporting indie brands. I think that they come out with some of the most interesting, most innovative stuff. And I am so glad to have that in my collection and it is an easy number four. Number three is also indie, as I mentioned. This is my Indigo Ink palette from Menagerie Cosmetics. I've also done a dedicated video with this. And I, I think that the quality on these is freaking amazing. Again, it comes to the duochromes. Their, their metallics are so freaking beautiful and I just cannot stop myself. Again, look at those. I mean, how, 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 how? So this is not a discontinued palette. However, the kind of problem, I guess, with Menagerie is that they are regularly out of stock because again, it is an indie brand. It's run by just a few people, but if you can get your hands on this, 100% recommend. Uh, one thing that I will note, and you'll probably see um, once I try to wipe these off, I did experience staining with this palette. I think I got most of it off. I did experience staining with the blues in this palette, but it wasn't anything that was a deal breaker or anything like that. Just be aware. All right, we're coming down to the top two. And I'm a little embarrassed about number two. I am a little embarrassed about number two. It's ColourPop. It is their, it's a mood palette. I cannot stop using this. 
Like for real, I cannot stop using this. It is just so easy to grab for. It has all of your neutrals. It has those beautiful jewel tones. I know I'm a broken record. I have a type. It's it's well known. Um, now there is there are a couple of changes. There were three pressed glitters that I popped out and replaced with other ColourPop shadows. So this is not truly truly this palette, but for the most part it is. I love this. It is so great. The two the 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 two shades that I feel like are a little bit frustrating for me are these two right here, which is sad because these are two of the shades that I was really very much drawn to. They're just uh, more topper shades than anything else. They don't have quite as much pigment, but this palette, like this shade, Wanna Go, right there, one of my favorite browns in existence. I think this is such a again. This is the good color pop formula. And I could not recommend it more. I mean, look at those. Sorry, we do have staining from the other one, but beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. I really wish, and that's this is not the point of this video, obviously, but I do really wish that ColourPop would kind of slow down a little bit because I love them and when they're really putting the attention to detail with to the makeup I mean the packaging is always like hands down outstanding um, but as I said the formula sometimes can be lacking I really wish that they had fewer more thoughtful releases that's clearly not going to happen because they have shown that that's not going to be the model that they go after but I really like these larger palettes that they've come out with, especially the It's a Mood palette. There are a couple more that I would like, but I'm trying to avoid picking up because I'm sure that I have them pretty much already in my collection. But this one is, it's so easy to grab and use and I really enjoy it. Which leads us to my top palette of 2021. I love this palette so much. This was a gift from the darling Carolina and I now have Beauty Bay on my radar. This is the Wilderness palette and it's everything to me. It's everything to me. These greens, these blues, these reds and oranges, like this is such an amazing palette. I'm going to try to swatch a little bit. I'm super stained at this point. Um, this is so good. I don't know if this is still available. I know it was sold out for quite a while. Um, so hopefully you can still get your hands on it because it's outstanding. And I now want to pick up more things from Beauty Bay because I am just so impressed with this palette. Like, look at those shimmers. Look at them. Oh, ha, 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 ha. So good. And the mattes I do really enjoy as well. I have enjoyed every single look that I have made with this palette. And I am so thankful to have it again in my collection because it is just, it is top notch. And it's super affordable. It's like $15. Again, I love it when these more affordable brands are just killing the game. And I feel like with the Beauty Bay formula, with ColourPop, when ColourPop is good, with BH Cosmetics, for sure. Like, these are some brands that are killing the game and they're doing it at a great price point. So, there we have it. Those are the top 10 eyeshadow palettes that came into my collection in this past year. And I need to know, do you agree? Do you disagree? And what was your top favorite eyeshadow palette of the year? Let me know down in the comments below because I love chatting with you guys. As always, everything that I've talked about will be linked in the description box below as well as everything that I am wearing. And if you have not yet subscribed, I hope that you'll consider doing so. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope that you're having an amazing day and I will see you next time. Bye.